Hello everyone, my name is Logan. Welcome back to the lecture hall. Today we're going to be covering section 2.6, limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. Um, so let's, as usual, start with a definition. We're starting with the intuitive definition of a limit at infinity. Let f be defined on some interval, a to infinity, right? a to infinity. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l. Let's look at a graph of it. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity, so it's an infinite limit, of x squared over 1 minus x squared plus 1, right? So what does that graph look like? Well, it looks like this, right? And so you can see x, as it goes out this way, as it's getting bigger and bigger, as x is approaching infinity, it's getting closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote y equals 1. And if you don't remember horizontal asymptotes, we're going more in depth in it um, in probably like two minutes. But as you can see, this is equal to 1 because as x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1 approaches, as x approaches infinity for this function, it gets closer and closer to 1, right? But it'll never touch it. So the infinite limit of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1 is equal to 1. So now let's look at the definition of a negative infinity limit. So intuitive limit at negative infinity because it's essentially the same thing. You just throw a negative sign in front of it. So let f be defined on some interval from a to infinity, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to l. So the only thing you really have to change is you have to change this to negative infinity to a, and then you have the same definition, or well, not the same definition, but the proper definition that's nearly the same definition. So let's look at, it, at a graph again. Why don't we go back to the same graph because it's easy to look at. So this time, all I did was add a negative infinity. So now we look at what the graph is doing as x approaches negative infinity, right? As x goes out this way, gets uh, more and more negative, what happens? Well, same sort of thing. It, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1, and it gets closer and closer and infin infinitesimally small um, in between, and it gets extremely close. So. Same thing, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1 is equal to 1. Um, so that's pretty much it, uh, it for negative infinity and positive infinity limits. Um, there's really no difference, I, well, other than the uh, negative sign, but it's the same sort of way of looking at the problem. So yes, now on to... The definition of a horizontal asymptote. So the definition of a horizontal asymptote, I uh, abbreviate to HA because who needs to write all that, you know? Um, the line y equals a, or y equals l, is a horizontal asymptote of f of x if the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals l. So we can look at this on a graph. And what we're, the curve we're going to be using is uh, the tan inverse of x. So the graph looks like this, right? And as x gets bigger, more and more positive, as x approaches infinity, it goes, um, just skirts right up to the line of pi over 2. But it never touches it, right? Because if you think of the graph of tan of x, you know, there's uh, vertical asymptotes, and it can never equal pi over 2, because then you would have um, co uh, sine over cosine of pi over 2, which is 1 over 0, which is, you know, can't have that. So we can see that this has two horizontal asymptotes, one at y equals pi over 2, and y equals negative pi over 2, right? So that's one way of looking at it. Um, we can also look at this at the function 
y equals 1 over x, right? y equals 1 over x. The graph of y equals 1 over x it looks like this, right? And so it can never equal 0 because it's 1 over. But it has, let me get another color. another color but as it comes along here it starts to approach zero so the limit as x approaches 1 over x is equal to zero right because this is equal to zero so lim x approaches infinity of 1 over x is equal to zero and lim limit of x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x is also equal to 0 because they both go out that way, you know, so as x gets increasingly uh, negative and increasingly positive, they both go to 0. After looking at y equals 1 over x and we see that it equals 0, we get a theorem that states if r is greater than 0 and is rational, then the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to the r is equal to 0. So it doesn't matter what r is, as long as it's greater than 0, this will always equal 0, right? Another, uh, this is just a fact that it's just good to know off the top of your head. Limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x is equal to 0. Alright, now onto the precise definitions of limits at infinity and negative infinity. So let f be a function defined from negative infinity to positive infinity. So it's continuous. Um, so here's the positive infinity version. Then the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equal to L implies for every epsilon there exists an n such that x is greater than n, which implies f of x minus L is less than epsilon. Negative infinity version. Limit as x approaches negative infinity is equal to L implies for every epsilon greater than zero there exists an n such that x is less than n, then f of x minus L is less than epsilon. So this is very similar to our epsilon delta sort of thing that we looked at. So we can look at the graph of this. Um, and we can see, alright, we can see as these dashed bars, your epsilon, uh, L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon, as they get smaller and smaller and closer and closer to L, that will start to give you the limit. And then as they get incredibly small, you get the limit, which is just L. So um, you don't really need to know, I mean, this is a good thing to know, but don't, don't waste time trying to memorize this, or trying to like really know this stuff because you won't need this for a while but you do need to know how to find limits. Alright, now on to our last definition for this lesson. The definition of an infinite limit at infinity. Let f be defined on some interval a to infinity and the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals infinity. This means that as x increases to infinity, f of x increases to infinity. So a very incredibly simple way to look at one, or uh, example, um, would be y equals x squared. So as x goes to infinity, x squared goes to infinity squared, right? Well, not really. Infinity squared, not really a thing. It's just infinity because x is, y equals x squared is always an increasing function from 0 to infinity, and that means that as x goes to infinity, f of x is going to go to infinity. So infinite limits are pretty, infinite limits when you get an infinite. Okay. An infinite limit at infinity are pretty simple because, or negative infinity, because all you have to look for is, is the uh, graph always going up 
is always going down as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. So they're pretty simple. Um, so as you can see, limits are incredibly important, but they are pretty intuitive. Horizontal asymptotes should make sense. They're nothing too crazy, but if you are having problems with it, just go on to Desmos, um, desmos.com, graphing calculator, graph them, and you'll be able to see the graph a lot better because being able to see the graph and visualize what the graph looks like makes it a lot easier to understand horizontal asymptote um, and infinite limits. So I highly recommend that. Do that with any problem you see in the textbook. Um, yeah, so this is all for the lecture portion. Let's transition into some practice questions. All right, now for the uh, practice problems, we're gonna be doing five and 27. So for five, it's sketch the graph such that the limit as x approaches zero of f of x is equal to negative infinity. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to five. And the limit as x, f, uh, as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to negative five. So what's the first thing we should do? Well, the first thing we should do is we should put in the horizontal asymptotes, which are the x approaches infinity and negative infinity. So we know that's gonna be at five. y equals 5, and negative 5, y equals negative 5, right? All right, so that's great. Um, and then, so, well, so where is it going? So x is approaching negative infinity, it approaches negative 5. So then you just kind of draw this out. You know there's something happening at 0, so we're going to wait on that because of this one. And then we know it goes to infinity, it goes to five, right? So we have that. So then what, what is this saying? This one, limit as x approaches zero of f of x equals negative infinity. Well, that means as f of x gets close to zero, it's just gonna go down to infinity like, like so. And then, but it'll never touch zero, right? And then it has to do it from both sides for the limit to exist. So it would look something sort of like that, where it has one uh, tail going, uh, approaching negative five, and then it goes down to infinity, and then another tail going down to infinity, and then one going up, approaching, uh, approaching five. All right, so now number 27, it's find the limit of this function. Well, okay, so x is approaching infinity, so as x approaches infinity, there, there's no, there's no like something on the bottom, there's none of that, it's just all on the top. So you can kind of look at this and you see, okay, 9x squared, 3x, square root of 9x squared. So it's like, oh, those will cancel each other out, right? So then all you have left really at infinity uh, is, you know, since this is going to infinity, it's you're taking an arbitrary large all you have left is this, really. Not technically, you know, perfect, but that's kind of what it would look like. So then, well, what does this look like? Well, as x approaches infinity, the square root of x approaches infinity. So that will equal to that, and that means that is equal to infinity. So, those are the practice problems we're going over today. Um, I'm going to have more posted in the description. I highly recommend that you do them because practice problems really are the best ways to uh, get good at math. So my name is Logan. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.